Here comes a kick from Vance on Lewis, showing once again why he is the best triathlete in the world. There is no doubt he is the world champion for a reason. My name is Vincent Lewis. I'm a French triathlete, ranked number one in the world, number one in Super League. I'm second on the Olympic ranking, but I'm closing the gap. And Vincent Louis is going to make it a perfect three from three. He is mentally mature and ready to be the best in the world. How do you dislodge this guy? Everything he does these days, he's got the Midas touch. He is the best in the world. Two years running. He raced four times in 2020 and he won every single one. And this Frenchman has announced himself with a perfect weekend. It's very, very rare that you get an opportunity in your career when all those three disciplines come together perfectly for Athlete. Vincent's in that sweet spot right now. There is no room for error. Someone's down and it is Matt Hauser. And he is a class above. Things just me well, no? <laughs> it's not easy to find a weakness with Vince. No one has cracked the code yet. It seems like he's becoming kind of unbeatable. Vincent Lewis. To be a triathlete, it's a, it's a relatively selfish endeavor because it, it it's, it's almost an obsession because it requires so much physical preparation. A typical triathlete's day is waking up at 5am in the morning, completing a complete swim program with the Olympic swimmers, coming home, eating, trying to get as much recovery in, getting out on the bike, chopping three to four hours of, of intensive bike riding, coming home, recovering, get some work done, and then running in the afternoon. So you're doing three disciplines a day, usually you know, 13 days out of every 14 day cycle. It's hard to perfect one discipline, but when you're trying to perfect three, it takes a very, very special individual to win all three. Olympics, WTS, and then to, to go and win Super League. It's more than hard, it's, it's, it's semi-impossible. <laughs><laughs> so I grew up in Vesoul, uh, it's a super small town, uh, it's in the east of France, it's close from Switzerland. My sister, she was basically the brain. We did the same school. Every time I was showing up, they were like, oh, yeah, you're good, but not as good as your sister. I think the school system in France is not as good as it should be, and I wasn't interested of in anything that we were doing at school. Il travaillait très vite. À l'école, il travaillait très vite. Les maîtresses disaient, euh, c'est pas soigné, mais euh, c'est juste, quoi. Mais le soir, c'est pareil. Il rentrait, il goûtait, il faisait ses devoirs, et hop, je file dehors ou je file à l'entraînement, ou voilà. Il voulait toujours aller dehors. Il tapait sur les carreaux. Il disait, je veux aller dehors, je veux aller dehors. When I was little, I was um, like really keen in going outside, doing a lot of activities. And basically when you're young, all your friends are playing soccer, so you, you want to play soccer too. I wasn't the best and I think I really was not made for team sport. I was always yelling at them, oh, you're not, you're not going 100%, you're not giving your best. I think they got a bit pissed at me, so I ended up being a goalkeeper. <laughs> Every year, I remember we had this race, this running race with the old school. I could race the oldest people, so they were four or five years older than me. And I remember beating them. And everyone was like, oh, who's this kid? And yeah, that was, that was super funny because they were like, yeah, but you guys are playing soccer and you think you're good runners, but over five or six K, I'm destroying you. J'ai commencé, c'était moi, on va dire, son premier entraîneur. Je l'ai emmené euh, déjà avec son petit vélo quand je courais, donc il me suivait. Honnêtement, je voyais quand même que Vincent avait quand même euh, un potentiel qui était supérieur à, à la moyenne. Et il avait un gros mental. Son, son côté, euh, je me suis fait battre, pourquoi je me suis fait battre Il avait des caractéristiques qui le poussaient quand même déjà. Et je, je l'ai senti, on l'a senti qu'il qu le poussait à faire ça. As long as I remember, I was yeah, really competitive. I always wanted to like, challenge the older guys. I think even in training, sometimes I pissed off a lot of guys because I was like every day super motivated for the training. Ah, c'était la belle époque, ça. First triathlon, I think I was 10 or 11, and I had like a really shit bike, like a bike from the supermarket that my dad bought me like two or three weeks before. We were racing like from 10 years old to 16 years old altogether. I mean, I was the best of the youngest, but it doesn't matter really because I finished fourth. And uh, the funny thing is actually this guy that that one is one of my best friends now. Tu derrière, j'ai senti euh, papa il faut faut qu'on voit tout ce qui peut me permettre de, de le battre en fait. 
Et en fait, on a essayé, de, voilà, avec les moyens qu'on avait à l'époque, de faire, de mettre en place ce qu'il fallait pour qu'il qu le batte. Hein. Donc il a repris aussi des roues un peu hautes. En fait, dans son esprit, c'est ça. S'il sentait qu'il a été battu par plus fort, mais tout de suite, dans sa tête, c'était euh, comment je peux trouver, euh, comment je peux le battre. When I started triathlon, when I was 14 or 15, I was the closest to be a pro swimmer. I got this call from like a swimming national training center. They said, oh, yeah, you got good results, you should come with us. And then I show up for the first game, two weeks. And it was basically, you swim two hours in the morning, you have two hours of gym midday, and you swim two hours again uh, in the evening and six days a week. But after a week, I was just like, wow, I'm not going to do that all my life. And my parents, they called me. I was like, please, can you come and pick me up? <laughs> Basically, that was it. And they're like, oh, we just had a call from like a national training center for triathlon. And if you want to try, you can try. And I went there and, I, and that was like two weeks, like of such fun. And I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. I want, I want to have some fun, but I want to work hard, but still having fun and, and actually talking to people. I don't want to put my head in the water for two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, and being super selfish and all this stuff. So I think that was the, that was the switch. Doing these two camps, seeing the difference between the swimming mindset and the triathlon mindset, that's when I say, okay, let's go for triathlon. So 2004, I was home uh, in Vesoul. I was rooting for the French guy, Fred Bellobray, uh, obviously. Back then, my real superstar was Bivin Doherty. I remember this race perfectly. Amish pulled away and, and won the race, and. Bivan finishing th second and Sven third. I remember the podium when they had like this uh, this thing on the head with the leaves and everything. I was just like, wow, this is so cool. Like Olympics are just like complete different level, and um, this is what I want to do. I want to race the Olympics. This is this is my thing. Par contre, à, à 10-12 ans, il avait déjà dit, moi, j'irai aux Jeux Olympiques. Oui, oui, si, si. On avait ri parce que on s'est dit voilà c'est un rêve de gamin mais finalement Et finalement il avait raison. Ouais. For me I was only focused on the podium and the medals and um, I think that's really where I understood and I knew that I wanted to be like an Olympic athlete. Taylor. Yeah, I made two toasts already. Maybe we can do two more. My name is Taylor Spivey, and I'm a professional triathlete. I'm ranked fourth in the ITU and third in the Super League ranking. Taylor Spivey's out of the water too. Taylor Spivey's gone straight to the front. She's going to run away with it. Taylor Spivey. I had seen Vince race several times before. I had ever talked to him and I think he had also seen me race before too. But I was a much newer athlete so I admired him because he came from a swimming background but I always thought he was, you know, so much more experienced, especially six years ago, seven years ago when I was just starting the sport. I'd always looked up to him but I had never really met him until he started messaging me on social media. I uh, knew that our our team camp was going to overlap in Flagstaff. We were both racing the relay, so he proposed a coffee date. He said if he won, that I would owe him a coffee, and if we won, I said he would owe me two coffees. So um, we beat him, so he took me out for a date in Flagstaff, and we've been together ever since. We used to come here with Taylor for like a few camps. Joel, my coach, told me, oh, you can, you can go wherever you want. And I told her, oh, I like Girona, it's nice, good weather, people are relaxed and they have good food, good coffee, so let's go there again. And we do that again, and we had good performances in Super League. She won the Super League in Mallorca, I won all the Super Leagues, like, at the end of 2018. I was like, we should not waste our money in Airbnbs or renting places, just, let, let's just visit some stuff. It's not crazy expensive, it's a good place to live, and, and we need to invest now. We realized that we really like this this place and that could be a good like base camp for us to, to, to go in between races and in, in between training camps overseas. And yeah, we ended up here slowly building our dream house and yeah, living, uh, living the Girona life. I think the first time I realized I could 
I won't say making it my job, but at least being good at it was nationals. I finished third. I was like, yeah, I think I think I can do better. I can train more. Obviously, I wasn't really running or cycling much. So I think that was the first time I really like raised the best in the country. You get back, the journalists are calling you from like the local newspaper, like, oh yeah, you're the first medal for the team, like at national. So you're just like, yeah, maybe that's good what I'm doing. But back then I was just enjoying. Like I was just like, yeah, come on, I'm, I will go with my parents and I will eat chips for the world travel at the back of the car. When I was 18 and I, I told my dad, yeah, I think I want to turn pro. And he was like, pro triathlete, that's not a job. So what are you going to do? I was like, no, but I think I want to, I want to give it a shot. I want to try. But he was, okay, listen, I got this money that I saved for your studies. If you want to spend it somewhere else, spend it somewhere else. But that's it. There is no more. Take your chance and, and do it all out. So yeah, I took this money. Um, I think I bought a car and, uh, and I start renting a place. But that was good fun. You know, you're just like living the life, eating frozen pizzas and stuff like this and trying to train and perform and, and you have no options. You can't get back. I mean, I won't get back to my dad and say, oh, listen, I waste everything and now I need to, to live here again and, and find a job without any diploma. So that was not uh, like an option. Bien sûr, bien sûr qu'on l'a aidé parce qu'on savait très bien que de toute façon, on ne pouvait pas faire autrement. Il fallait bien qu'il vive. Mais il n'a pas été très exigeant. Mais je pense qu'on aurait aidé s'il avait pris une autre voie, hein, qu'il a besoin, comme tous les enfants, qui ont besoin de démarrer dans la vie, quoi, comme on l'a fait pour la, sa sœur, euh, exactement pareil. Quoi. Mais il n'a pas été plus... Euh, voilà, enfin, ça ne nous a pas plus... Euh, je pense qu'il a eu ce qu'il fallait pour démarrer. 18, 20, you got your own apartment, uh, you start earning your own money and everything, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever, if I'm not going out to training Saturday morning or Sunday morning, it doesn't really matter. You kind of get into like a circle when the less you do, the less you want to do. And you're like, yeah, I still have my paycheck at the end of the month. I showed up at U23 Worlds. I thought I was the king of the world. I got destroyed. I think I finished like 35th. And I remember sitting in the hotel lobby, already dressed up for party. The Federation accountant sat next to me and he was like, so what's up? What, what did you do? And I was like, oh, I don't know, bad day. He was like, no. And no bad day when you were champion, it's, you did not work enough. And I start to be like defensive, like, oh, what do you know about track and you know nothing? It's like, ah, oh, yeah, you're right, I don't know much. But I know that when you were champion last year and you finished 30th this year, you did something wrong for one year. And I think that was kind of the day that I decided like, wow, nobody can tell me I'm not training enough. I think I'll try this a new way. I'm gonna show you the tricks that I know. Tired of talking And I need more of a show right now It's time that you made your mind up I think Vincent Louis' trump card is his, his ability to suffer more than his competitors. He really thinks about all the details, not only in training, but also in his recovery. He makes sure his nutrition is good, he makes sure his time in bed is good, he makes sure his material is always perfect before a training. And I think that's a lot of little points that I can actually learn a lot from him and that I look up to him for as well. To be able to train with, with the best of the world in every discipline, that's incredible. And especially in this time with the, the corona, and we have a, a small, but maybe one of the strongest squats in the world still. Well, it's training with the best guys in the world and it makes all the hard work a bit easier, sharing the pain together. 2010, I really like put myself together. I found a new coach and, and I start like scoring good points on U23. 2011, I did my first World Series. And straight away I performed well. I finished 9 for 10 for my first one. I remember running with these big names and I was like, what's happening? Like, what, what the hell? I remember starting the run and I was with Tim Don. And I was like, wow, this guy, World Champ 2006, he's a machine. Uh, I, I should just like stay behind him and just try to follow. And then after 500 meters, I was like, oh, it's too easy. Something's wrong, it's too easy. So I just like passed him, but uh, for 500 meters I was like, no, you should not do that, you're going too fast, this guy is so strong. In this race I beat the, the third French guy, the guy that was supposed to go to the Olympics the, the year after. 
And I was like, okay, maybe that was the beginner's luck. And then I raced again and again and again. I keep and I keep beating the guys and sometimes challenging the other guys like Laurent Vidal or David Hoss. And I remember 2011 Grand Final in Beijing. We were like going for kind of a spring finish from fifth to tenth. I finished eighth, I think. The performance director back then told me, he's like, if this race would have been the Olympic, you would be eight. So have a good winter and I might give you a give you a shot for next year. And I remember I came back home and I was like, wow, well, we're gonna train like maniacs. We need to train like maniacs. I need to win races. I need to go. Wow, well, in March I was injured. Done. <laughs> I had a stress fracture. That was my first injury. I did not know what it was. I could barely walk and I still like flew to Spain and did a training camp, run 100k a week and, and completely smashed myself. I remember a specific session of six times 1k on the, on the track, running 245k and I had a chair on the side and I had to sit between the reps because I couldn't run slow. The slower I was running, the, the more it hurts. But when I was going fast with the inertia, you know, the shock was softer. So I was just doing like 1K 245 sitting for one minute. 1K 245 sitting for one minute. I was just like, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Tomorrow's gonna be fine. I came back home and I had an MRI and they say, yeah, your shin is like, like broken glass. It's, it's destroyed. So you need to use crutches for four weeks and do like four weeks of rehab. And so we were in April and Olympics in August. And I remember that was like a race against the clock. After this, the French Federation, they told me, now we, you're gonna run a 5K for us. And if you're running faster than three minutes per K for 5K without basically any training, we'll pick you for the, for the Olympics. So I ran that 5K. I remember after the doc like knocking on my shin to see if I had any pain and stuff like this, but, but that was good. So they picked me for the Olympics, uh, finished 11th with Laurent and David. That was an amazing experience. And uh, that's where I learned all the things you have to do that you don't have to do on a normal race. And uh, yeah, I think that was a good, that was a good for the first experience, yeah. I think that Vincent's sort of rise to fame has been so steady that it was never suddenly like this shock, who's this guy? Where did he come from? You know, he was always there or thereabouts in that period between around about sort of 2009 up to 2015, where he really started making his mark was how he developed mentally as an athlete. His intelligence grew around racing. And I think that's really important because your body needs to grow and develop, improve the fitness and the strength, but so does your mind. And I think We've seen that about him, the way he talks now. He's a really deep thinker, and that has definitely helped him get the results. Back in 2013, I was going for Grand Final in London. I think three days before the race, I, I just lay down on the table at the, at the physio, and I was like, something's wrong. I, I don't feel anything good. I could see like my heart like going like super strong, and I told the physio, don't tell anyone. I want a race. I have a race on Sunday. It's fine. I'll be fine. And I think a few minutes later, I had a call from the doctor and said, oh, the physio called me, he said, you did not feel really great. And I can't blame him. I mean, that's his job. Huh? He won't let a guy race like this. And I was the luckiest guy. The race doctor was a really famous cardiologist. And he was like, okay, you come to my hospital and I will have a battery of tests running on you and, uh, and we'll see what we can do. So I got like an extra nerve in my heart. It's called uh, Wolf Parkinson White. Basically it got like a different electric signal. If it disappears when you're training, when your heart goes up, it's fine. But if it doesn't disappear, it can make your heart go in too fast. And he told me, I will allow you to, to do this race tomorrow, but uh, I'll be at the finish line taking all your, your stats and everything to make sure you're okay. And then after the Federation will suspend your license and you'll have to do heart surgery. So I did this race, I finished sixth in the world. He was at the finish line, oh, you're okay, you're okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good, fine. And then I flew back home and uh, yeah, I got surgery in Paris. Now every year I need to, to do a check. I did it last uh, week and uh, it's still uh, all good. So yeah, really happy I can still race. I think for an athlete to be diagnosed with any career threatening illness or injury must be utterly devastating, particularly when you're looking at how young Vince was at the time that he had this condition and it was right just at the beginning of him sort of moving into those senior ranks and people starting to look at him thinking, this guy has potential to win a lot of races. So all credit to him that he was able to deal with it and put it behind him. It's there, it's always there because he knows he has this condition, but to be able to go on and have the career that he has says a lot about the athlete he is today. I 
I was training in Reims, where I was living back then. And I remember in the morning getting a text. Laurent had a heart attack uh, last night and he did not wake up, he did not make it. I was like, wow. But I don't think I realized, you know, it's, it's hard because he was still young, I saw him a few weeks before and all this stuff. And I think it's really the day when I, uh, I took the train, went down for the funerals and I think that's really the day I realized like, wow. It's done, we won't see him again. It was a tough period. Uh, I lost a few other people, uh, my two grandmas, and you know, that was like kind of a blurry period. Like, for me, he's the guy I kind of like take as an example. I would love to do what he wanted to do, like what he started. Because I remember he was like, don't let people tell you you're the next Bronley. You're not the next Bronley. You're, you're Vincent, you yourself. And I think that's a. Uh, that's strong words, you know, you, because if you if you want to lose someone else or if you want to raise someone else, you're already losing. I think Vince would have felt a huge void when Laurent went. He was that sounding board. It was wonderful to see in 2019 in Lausanne in the grand final, Vince sealed the overall world's title and he was able to dedicate that to, to Laurent. I, th I think that was very touching. And I think actually whilst Laurent isn't here, he is helping Vince because he's inspiring him to those victories. I can't believe it. I, I see tomorrow. If I'm, I'm not daydreaming. I thought about my good friend Laurent that left us and I was just racing for my life at the end. Now everyone's going daily for reason. Yeah. Nobody makes the groceries anymore with Corona. Yeah. There we are. The worst part, unloading. I mean, we train together all year long, so we, we, we go through the ups and the downs. And I think every time I help these guys, they're also helping me in another way. So, typical week, hard hit reps, I'm not as strong as the boys, they help me. And the next day we have hard swim, and, and I'm trying to help them, you know, it's give and take. Them. When you're training with them, you don't think about it, like, oh, I'm helping them too much. You don't think about it. If you think about it, you, you, you can leave, you're not part of the group, I don't think. In the beginning, he looked, well, a bit like a typical French guy, like, uh, like al always looks nice, always dressed up perfectly. And when I started to know him, he's like actually the nicest guy that there is. If like you have a flat tire, he will be the one pumping up the tire. And um, he's he's just a great guy and uh, an inspiration, I think, for all of us in the group. So Vincent Lewis, uh, I mean, first of all, he's just such a a big idol. I have a very beautiful moment together with Vincent in Carlo Vivari. We won in the first pack, working together with a few other athletes. Carlo Vivari is a race course with so many uphills, so many downhills. When I was changing gears in the front, I lost the gears for one or two seconds. Vincent comes behind me, pushes me, so that I can get the speed to put up the shine on the gears again and to keep going. I mean, I mean that's, that's such a beautiful moment. When it comes to races, it's more like yeah, let's fight. Let's, it's, it's, it's the day now we can, we can give it all out. But I think I still have, a, I have respect for everyone on the start line, but I would still be more kind to the people that I'm training with. But yeah, if it comes to a sprint finish, I mean, nobody's gonna wait for anyone. I always thought he was a very cool personality. I was definitely one of the guys that I, that I really looked up to. But I have to say he looks very flashy and very aggressive, like a very, very strong personality. But um, 
when you get to know him, he also has like a completely different side and he's actually one of the, the nicest, most friendly guys that I know. And he, he does everything he can to help you. And yeah, I think that side even makes him even a more beautiful athlete and, and person. He's surrounded by some of the world's best athletes every day in his training. So I think that gives him a certain humility and it makes him appreciate the, the success when he has it. Yeah. You ordered a full, a full lunch, huh? They're still pulling pork? Yeah, but I didn't want to eat on the bike. Oh, there you go. Next time I'm having a full lunch here as well. Mm -hmm. Gracias. De nada. So what I think of Vincent Louis, he's fast, for sure. He's a, a guy I would like to smash when the 2021 season come. He's had uh, two good years now, and I think he, together with Gustav, were like the two winners of uh, 2020, with him winning uh, Hamburg and Gustav taking uh, Daytona. So uh, for sure, he's a guy that we often uh, speak about in our group <laughs> to motivate, like before the last K, Vincent Louis, let's go. Vincent Louis, he's a classy guy. I really thought me and him had a good connection there. We were talking together, we are like friends. He asked me for coffee. But then I checked his Instagram, he didn't even follow me. At the end of the day, he got to respect the guy. He's a champ for a reason, so yeah. What a star. Okay, see you All right. tomorrow, huh? Yeah. See you, amigos. Leading to Rio Olympics, I was like, I'm gonna go for this gold medal. I had the perfect winter, like until March, I was like super strong. I did uh, national cross country, I finished second. I was in the shape of my life. And then I would say, well, the, the shit starts to hit the fan and uh, I got injured, uh, stress fracture in my ankle. And then I kept running, then the second ankle, and then I had to use a wheelchair. So, you know, when you're training for the Olympics, it's not the best way to, to, to stay in shape. I show up at the Olympics, I was like, uh, maybe you can do something, but that was, I don't know, I was far away from winning. That was just like, I'm, I'm over this, like, it doesn't worth it. Like, all this time I wasted and, and, and everything, it's just like, I wanna have some like free time, downtime by myself. So I just stayed home for, for a few months, actually did not train. All my friends were like, oh, you should come with us, you should do that with us, you should come for like an easy drug or whatever. But I was just like, no, I want to be alone. I, want, I just want to do nothing. My body was destroyed, like I, I was sore from everywhere. Still had like my, my ankles were still hurting and everything. And, and I remember my coach back then, he says, oh, um, we're going to Kenya for a training camp. Do, do you want to join? And I was like, well, if one thing can can makes me like move or do something, that, that's this. I took a flight, flew to Kenya, and I think that's the best decision I ever made. I mean, you've seen these guys, they're running for their life, they're struggling to like pay the bill. They, I, I've seen kids eating grass. So it's, it's crazy. Like you notice how lucky you are and, and that you can't complain by finishing seventh at the Olympics. These people, they don't even know what's on the other side of the border from Kenya. And you fly in the world, you, you, you have money on your bank account, you have a roof on top of your head. I should not be depressed about it. I shouldn't find excuse for not training because I finished seventh. It's just that these people, they're just happy because they, they do a good sessions together. They gave me like a different vision of the life and of everything that what I had back then. That was exactly the thing I needed. It was a period, uh, a bad period for him. And for me, Rio is not a problem of uh, sport but just uh, with his mind. I know him a lot and uh, we, we talk uh, every, every day. And for me now, he, he is good because he has Taylor. Taylor is, uh, is the most important thing uh, in this moment for him. He has a quiet life and, and uh, just uh, focus on the triathlon and, and Taylor also and family. If he doesn't have Taylor, for me, it will be a big problem. I don't think people think he's cocky. I think people just think he's confident and he's there every day 
um, to give his best. And I think a lot of people have that respect for him. He's been humbled many times and he uses that as fuel to be the best athlete he can be. And, and if someone beats him, he's okay with that because they're better on the day. I think post 2016 was a huge crossroads for Vince. It could have gone two ways. This is not an easy sport, you know. You are not being thrown big checks every weekend like Formula One drivers are or footballers. It's tough. And I think it's always interesting in athletes' lives, that moment, that make or break moment. And he certainly made it then by making the decision to carry on to perhaps, you know, change his training environment a little bit, work out what he needed to do as an individual, both mentally and physically, to make him the athlete that he became after 2000. And 16. You know, having followed Vincent Louis's career since he was a junior and, uh, and, and hearing about the promise and really expecting a lot from him from the Rio Olympics and I know he went into there injured and, and I know there's a lot of talk around him not performing up to what his standards where he wanted to perform going to Rio and he sort of went off, off the radar a bit and then we launched Super League and he came into Super League like a, like a dynamo. <laughs> And our Super League champion with a perfect weekend is Vincent Louis. It was perfect racing for him. He's in the top two swimmers in the world of triathlon. He's in the top two on the bike. And he's unbeatable on the run in a kick finish and he's able to run with anyone. So how do you beat an athlete like that? Over an Olympic distance, there's time to get away, but in Super League racing, you can't. I will make my opponents run for the money. Super League now, apart from the Olympics, is the series that everyone wants to be doing. Oh my goodness, I watch that race and I just think, how do they do it? It is so intense, it is so fast. You have to be so accurate. And he executes Super League racing unlike any other athlete that I have ever seen. And I think what Vincent realized was Super League gave him an opportunity to refine the craft, to get his skills up, which you don't get in WTS racing, to refine those skills and perfect transitions that were gonna pay dividends for him coming Olympic Games. Super League has basically moved the learning curve for a lot of athletes that are now ahead of the game by doing Super League racing and are now going into these Olympics as favorites for the Olympic Games. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias. I mean, the Olympics, of course, it's a special race, but it's also it's just a race, man. Yeah. You just have to do what you do best. And half the people, they already worry too much before the start line. It's a big chance and, man, yeah. go for it, all in. Like I say, not much to tell you. I think you know the experience. You've been through the Olympics, you've seen it. I think you're hungry also you know what it's like to go in with big expectations. And, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I have this bit of feeling now that going to the Olympics, you know, four years, I mean, five years ago now, was like, well, this race can be like a life changer. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I need to win this race because my life's gonna be so much better. But now that, you know, I got this, this wins, I'm just like, wow, I'm already, I'm already happy with what really? I have. <laughs> that can be better, but it's not gonna like, it's gonna change my life, but not like crazy. So is it the same for you, like when you go f to f for a third win, fourth win in Hawaii, you're like, yeah, but nobody's going to take away my, my first two or three wins. Yeah, it, it's, it's a fine line, you know, because for, for me now, I mean, honestly, I have my kids yeah. and I look at my, my son before the start line. This was before the second one. And I just realized like early in the morning, like, man, he doesn't care. He does not <laughs> care. My, he just wants to go play. And if I have a day free for him, that's, then he's winning. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, like the thing is, I don't know, I still always have this, the feeling that I want to prove something, mainly to myself. But it's yeah. like, even for smaller races, I still get like pretty nervous. I always think pressure creates diamonds, man. Pressure, mm. pressure is a good thing. Yeah, you yeah. just have to realize that. It's, it's a good thing. Mm. The negative pressure and the kind of like, oh, what happens if, I think this you lose. Because yeah. you realize, yeah, man, yeah. Your, life, your life is okay. But I'm more and more thinking like, yeah, I've got a pressure, but I've got a pressure to do well. Yeah, exactly. I don't have the pressure of paying the bills with this race. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's a different thing. It's a different feeling. Yeah, yeah. Because it's... when you start, I mean, you go to like, your first worlds and stuff, you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I remember huh? I bought a coffee machine the week before and I didn't have the money. I needed to win my first prize. Yeah. 
I think the, the most important thing is, and only you can answer this for yourself, is to know why you're doing it. Mm. Like, why are you here? But I think you have to answer this question already before you get there. Otherwise, the process to get there is too long. Yeah. If you know why, and with the experience you have, good luck. Good luck, everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing to be fast. Strength and maturity of an athlete trumps speed every day of the week. Where Vincent's strength is, is his maturity, his strength and his endurance. He's at, really at the peak of his athletic life right now. I won a few races, two world titles, Super Leagues, and now, it, now I think I'm back to where I was when I was younger. Just going to races and, and enjoy it. I just cannot see anyone dislodging him unless he self-destructs. Can I win Tokyo and Worlds and Super League? I think I can. Will I? I don't know. I mean, uh, everything can happen. I think he's taken a lot from those failings at Olympic Games and failings when he's been a, a favourite to deliver. And that maturity as an athlete has, has sort of bubbled up into this perfect position. It's sports, so you just have to show up, be ready and, and expect the best. I'm going to go all in for this race. I make sure I do everything to make 2021 a good year.